All right. Welcome back to part two of tonight's live broadcast where I will be working on this animation and I'm I think I filled you full of information. I think a lot of the stuff that I talked about and showed you will start making sense um, whenever uh, whenever I start editing this. Um, let me uh, switch over here and click that. I'm gonna I am gonna clue you in on something. So when you're when you're um, wait guys. Do we mocap recoil weapons fire? Um, yeah, uh, we have done. We've attempted to do recoil. Um, I have actually taken. It. Again, if you're new, if you're if you're just joining us, this is an airsoft gun. This is not real. Uh, I have taken um, uh, something like a shoe or something, and I've I've sat there and I've I've hit uh, the front of a gun. Uh, a lot of times, I'll ask an actor if they've ever fired an actual firearm. And if they have, what I'll do is I'll sound there and I'll, I'll just I'll just whack the front of the gun, like like that, uh, and I'll say I'll I'll ask them, does it feel like the actual recoil? And when they say yes, then well then then I, I know we've kind of captured whatever that recoil is. Uh, the thing the thing that you want with recoil, if you're if you're going to try to capture it, is you don't want the actor to feel like they're pulling back. You want you want that un involuntary the recoil is coming from the from the from the front of the gun right again airsoft gun not real gun don't want to get in trouble with twitch or, <laughs> or something for he's got weapons on his channel <laughs> no it's, it's an airsoft gun it's made out of plastic and metal so um uh, could you real use a real weapon with blanks? You know what? You probably absolutely can use a real weapon with blanks. Uh, you can take a system like our OptiTrack system that we have at our job uh, allows us to tear down and set up someplace else. So you could totally take your system and go set up at a gun range or something and actually live fire if you really wanted to. I don't know if anybody's ever done it. I don't. I've never seen a a behind the scenes sit where they say, yeah, we got real recoil. Um, usually there's a lot of liability involved uh, whenever a studio goes out to live fire weapons. That's a uh, safety and, and all sorts of other legal mumbo jumbo to keep the, the company safe. Uh, so I don't know. I hope that answers your, your question. But yes, uh, I'm I'm sure you probably could. I, in fact, I don't know. I don't. I've never fired a weapon with blanks, so I don't know the difference between what a recoil with a blank is and one without. That's not a blank. Yeah. All right. So, where were we at? We had just baked this guy down, and he's like, "Come on, guys, let's go. Let's go look at that." Uh, the constraints that I have set up on this guy and you can see I've, I've set up a bunch of constraints way back in the day so I'm gonna have to debug this uh, <laughs> um, you're gonna have to watch me uh, <laughs> reverse engineer something that I did eons ago see weapon control to mocap I have a feeling that's what I need to unactivate so if I unactivate that let's see what happens uh, Yep, that works. Looks like, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot they had an actual rifle. It's like realistic M1 Grand rifle that they used during the shoot. So let me check this. F curves out. I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just analyzing my scene. I'm, I'm making sure everything's good. Obviously, like his hips, that was a thing. I'm glad I, you know, we saw that, and. Um, There we go. Whoop. Oh yeah, I remember I was gonna. I remember what I was getting at. Hold on here. So uh, we're talking about processing data, right? Airsoft rifle, not real. Um, so 
you've gone through in your game and you 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 said all right this is how we're holding our this is how we're holding our our prop i'm just using the word prop this is how we're using our prop this is how we're going to hold it this has been signed off by the art director animation director all the directors they love this this is the pose you know your hand goes here right so what's going to happen is you're going to go into this this file that has your your weapon rig and you're going to create a pose remember i talked about creating poses and your your pose is going to be right here this hand is going to be right here on this prop so once it's there even though the hands are someplace else you can actually process a whole lot of data really fast by having that auxiliary effector constrained to that control node so then what happens is as you process the data it's going to take that arm and it's automatically going to snap it into place whether it's a uh, a toy gun like that or a box or a cup a cup the hand is going to snap right to it so no matter how many cups of coffee animations i process that that's going to be all the same it's always going to be the same so it's there there hopefully that explains batching a bunch of stuff all right, so this is good. Grab my, I use a stylus and a Wacom tablet when I animate. I can't animate with a mouse anymore. It's just too foreign to me. All right. Uh, all right, so he's he says, come on guys, let's go. Let's jump, boom, and he lands there. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get his hand on that gun. Oh, Wacom tablet do I use? I use an Intuos 4. It's kind of an older one, but you know, it's got the cool little LED light-up strip. <laughs> um, if anybody's interested, uh, you can click on the shop link below. And I have a lot of the tools that I use, like keyboard, mouse tablet uh, if you order through those Amazon links it, it will help me buy a better mic <laughs> for my channel and um, all the money goes back into the channel so I can bring you awesome content so all right so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start getting his hands placed I think I'm gonna get his yeah I think I'm gonna get his hands placed so he runs, he goes, come on guys, and he jumps. And his left hand stays on the rifle the whole time. So let's get his left hand placed. So here's my box down here. And I haven't set up a an auxiliary or a control. I haven't set up an auxiliary effector just yet. But I can see that I have the constraints already set up. So it sh should be real simple. So if I go left hand, say create auxiliary effector there. I turn off this pull real fast on those legs. Don't need that. I'm going to uh, actually, let me reselect that. I'm going to drop that in there as a child. I'm going to say zero snap. Just going to make his arm look real ugly for a minute. Then I'm going to turn that off get his hand back up to where it was at before. Uh, I'm going to take that node and I'm going to align it to his natural motion capture. And in an animation layer, I'm just going to set a key. All right, so I'm going to go and I'm going to pose his hand now. And get it looking. Oh, two. There we go. Get it looking a little bit better. So let's, let's get this out again. Uh, whenever you're working, it's really helpful to kind of organize your schematic view so it makes sense, or at least it makes sense to you, right? And I just know from experience those are the thumbs. So I'm just going to move those out so they look like thumbs. That's the right hand, this is the left hand. All right, so let's get this. 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn on the auxiliary effector now. So instead of like moving his hand around to get it in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving around this, uh, this blue control node right here to get his hand into place. Select that, select this, that. It's got an ugly thumb because of the mocap. We captured fingers, but sometimes finger data isn't all that great. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's just yeah, ugly, little twitchy twitchiness. So what we do is we uh, will use it for the timings for like whatever the hands may be doing. All this, uh, I don't think I have a bind pose set up for this guy, so I'm just going to go on to my local rotational settings. I'm just going to zero everything out. There we go. Set a key. And I'm just going to start getting his hand into place. Welcome to the world of being an animator, where you're having to like... <laughs> look around these little tight corners to see what you're trying to pose. Oh, missed a couple of digits. There we go. That's kind of how I cascade the fingers whenever I'm posing them, and I need, a, need them to kind of like curled in, but kind of like offset at the same time. I'll select all my fingers, start to curl them, and then just select the, the next three, curl them a little bit more, next three and curl them a little bit more, and so on and so forth. It's just a quick way to kind of get your hands into place. All right, so I'm just kind of getting the, just kind of getting looking, looking at this stuff. A uh, great thing about Motion Builder is uh, the control rig gives you full IKFK of any joint. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll get the fingers kind of into place, uh, and then I'll, and then I'll fine tune, move them, move them around right where they need to be for that last little bit. I really like this control rig a lot. It is one of my favorite rigs to work with. Super powerful. Okay, yeah, so for the, the sign language, uh, well, we tried some new technology uh, that with our motion capture system. Uh, I'm not going to try to get too much into like what we're working on with Star Citizen because uh, we have around the verse and they talk all about that stuff. Uh, but we did full finger capture data where we actually had a marker on the tip of each one of the fingers, and it allowed us to like do some of the sign language for the game, right? Whatever it happens to be. Uh, but like any marker, if you close your hand like this to do you know, to do, you know, nice to meet you. Um, guess what's getting occluded? These are getting occluded. So it became, while it's really nice, and for things like typing, where your hands are out like this, and they're like typing, it, it, it did okay, not too bad. But when you, um, but when you're doing something really specific, where, where you're like, where you're doing this, like I, you know, the I love you sign language uh, emote, the, these are completely going away. You can't you can't see those finger marker data. And then it becomes very uh, really a, a challenge to clean those up afterwards. So uh, what we used, like what we got out of having all the fingers markered and capturing that data was like timing of like when, the, when they do like bullshit, right? Like, err. Uh, you can't see my my hands, but I'm doing I'm doing the bull or bull shit, right? So um, so that that timing is what we're we're picking up on, and and we're correcting the the poses of the hands. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, what about a weapon that uses finger data like something from the future, such as a weapon that you might enter inputs, Judge Dread gun, or even a item like a. From a are you talking? Uh, are you talking about like if I had something and I gotta go, like I gotta punch in a code or something in order to to get it to work? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, okay, so uh, when we capture hands, uh, we put markers on the index, the thumb, and the pinky. And whenever uh, whenever we do something like uh, make a fist, you know everything comes down and in. It looks fine. Uh, or but if we point, let's say we want to point like up. Well, uh, what's going to happen is these two middle fingers, the middle and the ring are going to interpolate between the two. It's going to, so it'll look like this. So you'll never get a solid point. But what you do get is you get, you get that kind of a, a motion of like, I'm tapping a button on my gun, like, like that. And that's enough timing for us to be able to go, all right, this, this is how the, the motion should, should work. Um, and then what we do is we do really strong poses to kind of like, we we look at reference reference footage of the shoot if we have it and we go okay well this is obviously he's actually point you know punching with a, a finger so we'll just curl these these other fingers in and get rid of that data and we'll just you know keep keep that yes the anything that blocks an optical marker from a camera gets in a way but we there are tools that help uh, rebuild the, the missing data. All right, so I got this hand in a good spot. I'm going to set my key. Yeah, I like it all right. Let's watch that. As he runs, he goes, come on, guys. And he jumps over. Uh, keep in mind, the uh, rifle is in control of his left arm now because the rifle has a rig on it. And you can see his fingers flipping out like here at the end of the animation uh, because they got occluded from from the cameras and they're, they're doing all sorts of crazy stuff uh, because his hand his left hand's not really moving we really don't need data on those fingers so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to my first frame I'm gonna select all of the fingers on that hand I'm gonna go to my F curve editor rotation I'm gonna go to my base layer animation which is where all my that is, and I can actually see where we're getting flip outs here. You can, so let me uh, pull this up, and you can actually see uh, where we get, <laughs> where the data is doing this kind of crazy stuff right here. But I could fix this, but I don't think I need to because his hand doesn't do anything other than stay on that rifle the whole time. So I'm just gonna grab all that finger data I'm just going to delete it. Everything but the front first frame. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that first frame there as kind of an anchor point, just in case. Oh, yes. You see the puppies? Uh, there they are. Wait, wait. Wrong way. <laughs> They're kind of back there. You can kind of see them. There they are. Puppies. Right over there. They're being good, quiet dogs right now, so I'm just going <laughs> to go leave them alone so they don't start barking again what what do we do if we shoot something that is good uh, but it turns out to be garbage later if we can't fix it if using um, rigid bodies or if the data is just so bad what we'll do is we'll see a lot of times we'll send it back and we'll say we need this redelivered uh, because most likely what had happened is the uh, the vendor messed something up in the cleaning of the data uh, and then they'll clean the data and they'll send it back to us if it's just 
something happened during the shoot, like, I don't know, data got corrupted and there it's unrecoverable. Then we do a pickup shoot and we'll reshoot whatever that motion is. But yes, we have scrapped data before and uh, started fresh. All right, so I'm watching him and he's doing that. He says, come on guys, let's go. And he jumps over the thing. All right, now let's go look at his other hand. Just a little bit hard to see. So when I did my character setup, uh, in one of my other tutorials, I should have a light rig on here. Light control, which is right there. Uh, and this is why I said, put a light control on your, you can like rotate lights around in your scene and kind of get like a really nice view of whatever it is. Although he's got so much stuff on his hand, he's got this big glove. It's really kind of hard to tell what's going on here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that rifle and I'm just going to turn it, uh, not wireframed, gray shaded. There we go. Uh, this will help me differentiate his fingers from the rest of the gun. All right, so let me get his this hand into into place now. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab. Uh, actually, let me show you how I set my schematic view up to make it be a little more an, animator friendly. So I'm going to pull my weapon uh, rig down here. Uh, then I'm going to grab these control nodes, which are right here. I selected them in the control character view, so I don't have to come up here and actually search for them. Uh, and then I'm just going to drag these down here like that. And I'm going to say left, left goes with left, right goes with, with right. So there we go. So right hand, I'm going to align it. And I don't have to align in the perspective window. I can actually align here by doing that. Oh, <laughs> I parented it. All right, rear. Uh, let's see, arrange from selection. <laughs> let me, let me. Let me fix my mistake. There we go. So align to the wrist effector. Align, not parent. Wait, left, left, right, right. And I can't see it. Why can I not see it? I wonder if it's because of the scale. Oh, no. Nope. Da -da -da -da. What did I mess up? I messed something up. Oh, that's what I messed up. Remember when I told you don't scale uh, the control node? Well, that's that's why. <laughs> it's all messed up now. It took on the scale. So let me unparent. Let me fix that scale. Let me reparent. There we go. All fixed. I made a mistake and I fixed it. So align, translation, rotation. There we go. I fixed my mistake. Now I'm going to create a auxiliary effector. Go over to my constraints, and this is the right hand. So I'm going to take my uh, auxiliary effector and parent it into here, or constrain it to there. I'm going to zero that off. It didn't. You didn't see the hand move this time because it's everything's right on top of each other. Uh, go back to my animation layer, and I'm going to start posing this hand. Uh, when this rifle was designed, it had a design flaw of they didn't check to see how big the actual hand was going to be <laughs> when. Uh, uh, when they built the gun, so the the grip on the gun is 
way small, way small. Uh, and of course, when I messed up that thing, it messed up my little, oh, all my organization. Let's see, arrange from selection. There we go. Erk, erk. And then do that. And that, 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 and do that. There we go. All right, so I'm going to try to get his hands close to being on that, that grip. I remember this being a problem back when I was working on this game. So let's go get his fingers posed. I'm just going to grab the, the IK node on the end of the finger, just kind of get into place really fast. And remember, gun safety, boys and girls, uh, never put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to shoot. All right, so I got that pose for that hand, but his elbows are like really, really tight. So one of the things I want to talk about is like strong pose posing because not just in hand key animation is strong posing crucial. Motion capture strong posing is crucial because it can make or break an animation. Uh, see, are there ever issues where somebody can't convincibly hold a gun because uh, characters' gloves, etc., are too big? Blah blah blah. Uh, usually, on a mocap stage, unless there's something very specific, we we don't have like big props uh, or big big gloves for actors to wear. It's just their their bare hands. Um, hopefully, in the design phase, that's all worked out. Uh, if you're lucky and fortunate. Um, I have had actors never handle firearms before, but now they have to because of the shoot. Uh, so usually they'll go through a training process so they, they don't look awkward. They actually feel, you know, more like the character. Let's see. So, so do you have to wait for the modeling? Uh, of that particular rifle to make the hand fit properly or just make it close as possible when they update the model the model will be there uh, it's kind of a back and forth process uh, what you have is you have a concept artist who's who is um, concepting out what the gun should look like or the prop should look like or the character should in what the character should look like uh, then you do have a white box phase where um, uh, you white box everything out in very simple shapes, nothing elaborate. You do a fitting uh, with the character where the character holds the white boxed object or interacts with the white boxed white box object. Uh, and then you figure out all the problems with whatever it is. And if there are none, great. But if you're like, well, this is too big or this is too small or this this doesn't quite fit right or that stock is so long, you're 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 holding the, the rifle out like this versus like something that's nice and tuck, tucked in, tucked into yourself. Right. Uh, into your shoulder. So you, you go through this whole process of like fitting and testing and going back and forth between uh, design and modeling and animation. Uh, just kind of make sure everything, and by design, I mean like the designers who are designing the game, um, to make sure everything is uh, within the scope of whatever the project is and, and fits all the, the criteria. Uh, and then when everything is good, you can say, this is a metric, this is solid, uh, everything from this point is going to fit whatever this bounding box, this white box is. uh strong posing yes all right so strong posing yeah yeah there we go back to back to strong posing so he uh he has his elbows kind of like tucked in really tight here so i'm gonna 
I don't know if I care for that so much. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull his arm out just a little bit, kind of give him some uh, just a little bit of flair to his arm so he doesn't feel so uh, like he's guarding or bracing himself so much. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn off the IK from his his glove. I I think I'm okay with where the hand is at. I don't think I need to. Well, let me adjust his thumb. Uh, <laughs> there we go. His thumb was a little tucked in there. Pull his thumb up. All right, now I'm happy with the pose. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn off the IK on his right hand because I need to figure out the timing of when he like lets go to, of the rifle. Say, come on, guys, let's let's jump this thing. Um, so he's going to look up and he goes, come on, guys. So you can see where his hand is like starting to come. Do, he does this really nice little twist off where he goes and it starts to come off the rifle. I think right here, I'm going to try right here. I'm going to come up here and I can actually key these on and off. So right here, it's going to be on key key. Uh, you can see it set a little key right there. They come forward a frame. I'm going to turn it off key key. I could blend this over the course of frames, but I, I prefer to just do it in one frame. Uh, you're going to see a little pop in his arm as his arm detaches. You can see that pop. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to fix that. I'm going to fix that by selecting his arm and I'm going to hit set key and it's fixed. So now you're not seeing any pops. <laughs> so what happened? What happened there? So uh, his arm is actually drifting a little bit as it goes from the first frame to this frame. Uh, and but since I turned IK on, you don't see it drift until the IK turns off when you see the hand pop down. Uh, so by setting a key, I what I've done is I've set an additive key on top of it. So it's it's corrected the pose uh, of that arm. Now I, this could be completely messed up. This arm uh, at this from here on out until he puts it back on and locks back onto the rifle. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and right about there, I'm going to set a zero key and I'm going to show you what happens when I set a zero key. So let me, let me go to my, uh, so this is what we have right here. I don't know if you can see this too well, uh, you can kind of see you can kind of see a little bit of a on some of these keys. There's a little bit of a change, but as he pulls his hand off right here, I'm going to set a zero key, zero, and you can see everything's pinched down to zero. Oop, did I move something? There, I did. Uh, everything's now gone back down to zero. So what that means is it's actually gone down to the base layer, which is right here, which are these keys. So I've now blended it off. And I screwed up his left hand somehow. I must have I must have done something. Eh, I won't worry about it for the time being. Let me let me see what his his right hand is doing. So uh, as he oh, I wonder if it's because I set a whole body key. Let me let me go to that. I'm gonna delete that key right there. Oh, I did. I, I set a whole body key. That's that's what happened. So when I set the whole body key, it took that node, which has a pose associated with it or and and uh, things associated with it. And it shot it back to zero because I hit zero. So let me let me redo that again. So you can see his arm wanting to go in. I'm going to go grab that left hand control and you can see it, that's the zero key that I set like a bonehead. There you go. Let's turn that off. Right hand. Oh, he's got his fingers. I'm going to go to full body key. I'm just going to delete that key again. Just make sure it's gone. There we go. All right. <laughs> Take three. So his left hand should be fine now. Yeah, his left hand's fine now. All right. <laughs> My mistake. So I got to go to body part mode. It's a step I forgot, probably because I'm yapping. Uh, and I'm going to go to right about here. And I'm going to hit zero key and only his left arm or only his right arm moved. 
Uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna play with that key just a little bit, maybe bring it out a little bit more. Goes, come on, guys, and he's gonna put his hand back on the gun, right here-ish. Give me just one second. It's like really hot in my office right now. I'm gonna get a little fan here. I'm gonna turn on. There we go. That's, oh, that's much better. All right, so he's gonna come. He's gonna put his hand right back on that rifle. Now the rifle is going through his body, but we're gonna get to that in, the, in a minute. I'm first I'm gonna get his hand onto that rifle. So he's gonna come back down and make a tat, it's gonna attach right there, I think. So I'm gonna go select it, the auxiliary effector. I'm gonna hit key, key. That's my zero key where it's off. I'm gonna hit key, key, key it on. You can see it's actually messing up his arm, but it's okay. So it's, this is non-destructive, non-destructive. I'm gonna grab that. I'm going to set a key here. And let's see, it's going to come up here. I'm just trying, I'm trying to find where the best place is to put his hand is what I'm, I'm trying to think. What is he doing as he's jumping over? Is he actually grabbing onto the grip of the pistol? No, I think he's actually grabbing onto the stock. He's not grabbing onto the pistol grip. He's grabbing onto the stock of the rifle. So when it turns on, click, I'm actually going to take this node and I'm going to rotate his hand back and up so he actually grabs the stock right here-ish for now. I set my key. And he jumps and there we go. And it turns off. Yep, it turns off. Let me uh, select his arm. I'm going to double check his arm. So I've got a key right there. I set my zero key right here. I'm going to set another zero key. I'll show you what those curves look like here. So what you can see is it went from the offset key here down to the zero keys where I want what he actually did in the mocap to, to come through. And then it comes back in and it locks down right there. And then he jumps over the thing. Uh, let's see, there we go. And he lands. And then he probably switch, slides his hand back down to that pistol grip at some point, probably like right there. Right there, that's where he does it. So there, let me go and take some of body part mode. I've got the right hand placement selected. Lands and comes here. I'm going to copy that first key, paste it there. That's going to put it back onto the pistol grip. So I took the pose right down here uh, where it started and I pasted it over here. It's going to get his hand kind of in place. Uh, I'm going to adjust this timing here uh, as, as I work to kind of get it to where I want it to be. But I think what I need to do is I need to play with this rifle a little bit. So I'm going to grab the rifle itself. And this should be this control right here. Yeah, it's that control. And I'm going to start keying the rifle. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that the rifle is being held away from his body a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Loves the jump. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, I, need, I think I need to pull this away from his body. Yeah, like that. You can see when I set my key how it, it made an offset. It, this is these are the offsets. Yeah, rotate his rifle a bit like that. I think I might need to put his rifle up here. You can actually see the, the mocap rifle that they used on set right there. I'm going to hide that. Don't need to see it. In fact, I'm going to go and I'm going to hide all of the C3D data because we're not using that anymore. So it is uh, Shift H to hide. There we go. So I'm pulling it away from his body a little bit. He's looking around. He's looking around. It's actually it's slowly going back to zero. I think I want the zero key to be right here though. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to pull that away like that. So now that the rifle feels a little more like it's a little bit more away from his body and not clipping into his body so much. All right, so a little bit of a pop in his arm there. Uh, and that's because I just need to reset that offset key where his hand detaches. So I've just set a key there. You can see it shifted, curves. He says, come on. All right, back to the rifle. Clipping too much into him. I'm going to bring that out like that. I'll probably have to reset that offset key on that arm, but that's okay. It's all good. If if I feel like I've made some big mistakes, I can literally delete that animation layer I'm working on and start all over. And it's clipping into his body some more, so fix that. Uh, it does help to have a prop that closely represents whatever uh, prop you're using in your game. It really does. And it comes back in here, but I want to zero that out. Zero key kind of gets it backwards. Where it was originally, when in doubt, hit a zero key and get back to where the motion originally was. I'm going to pull this away from him. All right. Now he's going to go jump. Let's look at what it looks like right here. It's kind of cutting into him, so I'm going to pull that away from him. The pop thing, how is it stuff, this stuff keeps making it into actual finished games. Feet sliding, etc. Uh, if you're talking about feet sliding when you're walking, it doesn't quite line up with the ground. There's a lot of reasons that that happens. Um, maybe the game doesn't support feet IK. Um, t matching certain movements with how... So there's a little node underneath your character. I've, I've mentioned some of my other tutorials and that node moves around and that's really what's moving, you know, and it's got a little camera on there, right? And that's you moving around, <laughs> around a game. And then the little animation is just set dressing that moves with it. So what you're trying to do is whatever speed that that node is moving, you're trying to match the feet to essentially, right? Um, so there's a lot of math that goes into figuring out speed versus how fast you're moving and how many meters a second are you moving uh, and that sort of thing. Hey, Richard, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, so so the node's moving around. Your, your, your animation's moving with it. Um, if you have leg IK in game, which a lot of games do, do have it, uh, it will be able to detect when the foot hits the ground and it will kind of try to lock it to the ground the best it can. 
before it picks up and moving. But uh, sometimes you, you just can't help it. Uh, when it comes to pops, um, it could be a number of issues causing a pop. Like it could be two poses that don't match. Like somebody made a mistake and screwed up on one of the animations. <laughs> the pose isn't quite what it's supposed to be and you, you'll get a little little pop and yeah, it happens. I'm sure I've made mistakes <laughs> in the past on games. Oh, in, in Starhawk, I was so upset because it, it shipped. Uh, I had these taunts where these guys were like going, yeah, like holding the gun like over their head. And let's see if I can get back and do this. Get down so you can see me. So they're like going, yeah. But I forgot IK was turned on when I baked it down. So the hand was like, like this and they're going yeah <laughs> and it's an easy fix on my part it's just literally just fix the hand and re-export the animation but we had already you know gone gold which means we it's gone off to have the game disc actually printed so that was it there's no fixing that and i was so upset with myself that i didn't catch that <laughs> All right, so back to the weapon. So the weapon's away from him. I feel like it needs to be a little more like this. So here, he comes around, pull it away. Jumps up. Up here, I'm going to hit another zero key because I want that to be more dead on and then he lands boom right there set that right there Vorland Crow did I say that right thank you for the follow if I miss if I butcher anybody's names I apologize I've got these little wiggly things I'm trying to read So, Donut310, thank you for the follow. So, anywho, uh, so he lands, he comes up, and zero, zero that key out. I think I'm going to raise this up. Rotate this around, make it feel a little more natural. Again, I'm, I'm thinking strong posing, right? We kind of talked about that earlier. What's a strong pose? Um, in this case, I, I want this gun, this rifle, to feel like it's, you know, like it's not just there. I want it to feel like he's actually holding it and handling it. And he turns around. Actually, the animation probably would have cut right here. <laughs> so we're gonna pretend. I, I have a feeling he's, he his his uh, the animation he is supposed to like jump up and like land and be ready to go, and then that's where we yell cut. So I'm going to push that key there. I'm going to crop my animation. That's frame 222. So I'm just gonna 222 it right there. The animation actually probably starts at frame 15 because he's like looking, the actor's looking down and then he looks back up. No, I take it back. I bet, I bet the action actually is supposed to start at, at 91 because I think it's need, it needs to be a quick, come on guys, let's go. So I think we start at 91. So I'm going to go ahead and crop that to 91. I'm pretending I, I remember what I was doing back in 2010. <laughs> uh, come on, guys. Let's go jump. All right. So I think the gun's feeling a lot better. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to re-examine those hands. I just kind of loosely blocked in there. So let me go back to those, uh, that IK. Yeah. Hit save so I don't lose my progress. All right. So he comes up, he goes, hey, guys. Let's detach his hand right here. Set that offset key. 
goes, come on. And he puts his hand back on right there. You see that pop? All right, so I'm going to set that offset key right there. So his hand shouldn't pop now. It should kind of come right back down and kind of like grab a hold. I might, I might fiddle with that a little bit more. His elbow is pretty bad though. So I need to come back in. I need to fix his elbow. Let's see. So come on. Grabs his rifle. Let's push his shoulder forward a little bit. So one of the things that bugs me the most about some uh, CG work, and I've seen it in movies, and I've seen it in video, a lot of video games, even even that new um, Star Wars trailer for the game, I've, I saw it, and the problem is shoulders, and how certain animators handle, sh or should I say don't handle shoulders. Um, so let me explain shoulders for a second. So the way the shoulder works is you have a clavicle, right? clavicle and if I raise my arm up it's going to raise up to a certain level it, my arm's not going to go up any higher so what's going to happen is in order to get my arm up higher over my head my 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 sh shoulder blade my or not shoulder blade my my clavicle has to has to lift up right so now I've got this joint coming up here and lifting up right uh, and what I see a lot in in movies and games is they don't take that into account so you'll be like They'll get their lightsaber in the hand like, and I, I can't physically do this because my just physically, uh, the kinematics of my body, all of our bodies wants to raise that, that shoulder up to, 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 to do whatever that sword swipe is or, or to reach up and grab something, you know, you, this is all moving. And it really bugs me when I see some, some animation where they're, where, where it's like, they don't even think about whoever's whoever's animating it doesn't even think about those, those shoulders coming up or coming forward or coming back uh in grand theft auto i forget which it was one of the earlier games so i'm not going to blame too much for this this is like a long time ago every every character his their shoulders are like super low they're like way down here it's, whoever did the retargeting on that just didn't do a good job uh sorry sorry rockstar that that was not a rock star move on your part with those shoulders, but uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, all the rest of their games look really great. By the way, uh, they've they've really improved the quality quality bar, I believe. Uh, but that's just one example. Um, uh, I think I want to say it was Vice City, Vice, Grand Theft Auto Vice City that I saw that those really bad shoulders. Uh, but yeah, like the new Star Wars, you go watch it and and you'll. I, I was like, come on, guys, it's not that hard to like kind of get that shoulder in there and make it feel, you know, feel good and natural. So anyway, back to shoulders, <laughs> back to posing this character. Strong posing, very, very important. So let's get that shoulder in there. He's going to come back. He's going to put his hand on the gun. Uh, now, to be fair, sometimes it, it can be a very difficult character to work with uh, whenever you're posing. Get this other this other arm. Uh, it, it looks like his wrist is breaking right here. I'm not super worried about that at this at this point in time. Uh, I'm really more concerned about shoulders and arms. I ruined shoulders for you. <laughs> Let's put that arm out a little bit there. There we go. Let's drop that shoulder down just a little bit. It's got some weight because the, the other hand is let go. That shoulder back. Uh, I'm just trying to work with the motion capture. You can see he's got kind of a weird funky neck here. That's going to have to be a fix. I'm sure, uh, we're going to do a neck, neck fix on this. Uh, and this is a uh, it's really easy to do. Let me show you how to do that. 
so we have these three nodes in here. Sometimes you'll only have two. You'll have a neck and a head. We This happens to have two neck joints. So I'm going to select all of those. And I'm going to go to my base animation layer. I'm going to select all of my keys. And I'm going to scare you guys and gals. I'm going to hit zero. And I'm going to completely flatten <laughs> the rotation on that neck and head. So what he has is he has super stiff neck now, right? Now let me show you how to get the motion back. What I did when I by grabbing the, this uh, this yellow uh, these yellow nodes, this is the FK rig. Uh, the IK rig, which is that right there. Let me see if I can go to X review. So let me select this. So these yellow, these yellow um, markers, these sticks here, these are um, FK. I want to go to my IK node, which is this, which is that red sphere in his head. Uh, and I'm going to turn, if I select rotation, you can see it still has keys on it. So I'm going to turn, oh, if you can't see it, <laughs> let me go up to those controls. Uh, I'm going to turn rotation back onto the head. It's still like cranking his neck pretty, pretty severe. But I can blend that. I can blend that back, make it feel a little more natural. Part of the problem is just the way that this neck is constructed. Like this joint is like way too high in the neck. Can you see that? See how it sits above the collar line? Uh, this would be one of those ones where I send this back to uh, the character rigger and say this this is too high. And this would be in that white box phase that we talked about earlier. Like, how, how does that happen? Um, how does this work? How do, you, how do you make sure things fit? Uh, now, in all fairness, when this skeleton was built, I think it was built for the lead protagonist character, so it actually fits him quite well. But these other characters came along afterwards, so it may not fit them quite well, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, so that's part of the reason why his neck looks so cranked off to the side. is It should be rotating from like right there about where that button is, but, it, but it's not. But it's okay. I just... I'll just turn down the, the motion just a little bit, uh, some of the weighting, and I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's get back to this guy. So his hand comes off, he goes, come on, let's go. He re-grabs his rifle. Let me fix the popping there, in my animation layer. Uh, so one of the tricks I do is I'll take this node and I'll, I'll animate it where I need it to be. I'm gonna set a little key right there just to mark my place. Set one right there, come back here. Because sometimes it's easier. Align, translation, rotation, put that into place. And then I think what I'll do is I'll probably fix the blending of that node to be a little bit different. Maybe start kicking it on right there. And then I'm going to adjust this because to me this doesn't look so good. I'm pull that hand out, and I want to straighten up that wrist a bit, and try to fit that hand a little bit better onto the stock of this rifle. Still has crazy fingers. Haven't gotten to fingers yet. So working with a slow scene like uh, 
because this is so quick. There's like sometimes you don't see things. Um, it's the same process for something slower. Um, you just kind of have to think about contact a little bit more. Like if, especially if you're going to see the the hands touching the thing, whatever it is. All right, so I think I I think I like where his hand is grabbing it right there. I'm going to copy that those keys. I'm going to come all the way over here, and I'm going to paste those keys right here. Just a simple select, Control C, come over here, Control V. Uh, you have to make sure that your cursor is actually inside this uh, these uh, keying controls this uh, time slider here otherwise you could actually copy and paste a node by accident <laughs> so all right so then he does this little slidey thing now we're going to actually hand key this to make it feel more like he, he's like letting go and actually like gripping on to that but we'll do that in a minute or maybe we'll do it now i don't know maybe we'll do it now i think i'll do it now Let's let's try this out. So in my head, as I do this, uh, I'm thinking about his hands and what what they're going to be doing. They're 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 gripping on to the stock of the weapon. And by the way, this is uh, why a lot of animators have props by their by their desk. Is airsoft? This is airsoft. This is not real. Um, he's grabbing on, and I want him to kind of come in. And so what we'll do as an animator is we'll, we'll sit here and we'll kind of figure out how he's going to adjust himself. So he kind of like, he's got to pick his hand up and clear his thumb. And then he's going to come up and hit the palm of his hand to the, the grip and then come in and prepare it to, to fire. By the way, if you're really in the military, you would never take your right hand off of that. You would, you would do everything with your left hand. You would say, you know, come on guys, let's go or let's go. You would never, you would never actually take your hand off this way. But this guy's not a, he's not a super soul. He's not a military dude. He's just like a, he's a guy, uh, you know, just a miner who's caught up in some turf war with some bad guys or something. Uh, but yeah, so just FYI, you know, uh, never, never take your right, your right hand off your <laughs> your action handoff. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so he's holding here again, I'm in my mind, I'm going through the process of like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm coming up. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to come up clear. Let's see if I show that. I'm going to come up. I'm going to clear my thumb stock, come down. So I think that's what I'm going to do up, up, down. And this is why animators are strange and modelers and designers look at us like we're crazy because we'll, we'll just get up and we'll do stuff like this. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do. He's going to go. So my hand motion is the first thing I'm going to think about because I'm, I'm doing broad brush strokes. I'm going to go like my wrist is my. If you look at the, the palm or the back of my hand, it's going to it's going to come up. It's going to come up and come down. Then I'm thinking about, then I think about my fingers. What are my fingers going to do? They're going to splay out, come, and wrap. So I think that's how I'm going to handle it. All right. So where were we? Okay, so sit here. So, and then he's going to go... Rotate and clear. Kind of like how I was acting it out. It's got big gloved hands, so I'm going to have to move it out kind of far. Set a key. So it kind of comes out. And then he's going to kind of kind of come in and, and uh, palm the grip with his hand. 
and it's going to mean that it's going to come back in. He's going to kind of hit with uh, with that part of the hand. Again, I'm not worrying about the elbow or the arm. I can I can fix that later. I'm really what I'm really concerned about is the hand and, and how it's hitting. And then it kind of comes into the final resting pose. So how do I do this? It kind of comes in, it goes. I think that's not enough. So I'm going to put a little more flare on that hand as it kind of comes up and out. And I'm going to twist it like this. So it kind of comes up over and locks in. Now I set rough keys. I just kind of guesstimated where I wanted uh, the timing to be on this. Uh, what I was really looking for was was the pose. Uh, a lot of uh, hand key animators, uh, they'll when they animate, there's two there's two ways to animate, and this is part of the twelve principles of animation. This is why, even though you do motion editing, it's important for um, for you to understand the 12 principles of animation because one of the things you have is pose to pose and then you have uh, straight ahead animation. Those are two different types of ways to animate. So a lot of times a traditional animator will do um, kind of a, a pose to pose and they do stepped keys and they kind of figure out the timing and everything feels a lot like a traditional animated movie, uh, kind of like the way they do the, the framing uh, and the key framing and, and tweening and all that. Uh, and then as they go and they refine those keys, they will they will adjust the timing and they'll figure out when does the hand need to come up, when does it need a palm, and when does it need to wrap around. Because the timing of those keys, it's like throwing throwing a baseball, right? So it's like, or let's say I want to, or not, actually, it's like pointing. It's like I want to point over there, but do I want to do I want to point over there, or do I want to point over there, or do I want to point over there? You see the difference between how I flick, flip the wrist? It's like, this is kind of like a neutral point. This is kind of a flamboyant point, And this is to the point, right? You do that, or you do that. That's that's the difference between timing on, on a simple key. So. <laughs> So he comes up, he grabs and grips. So let's let's play this real real speed. Uh, I'm not gonna crop, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch in my timeline like this, so that I'm only looking at this little section right here. And I can real time kind of come in here and adjust these keys. You can see just by shifting this one key a few frames forward, it's like a much quicker motion, which I don't think I like that. I think I like that a little bit more. I like I like how it's holding off here, and then this is more of a quick adjustment. I think I might take these, I might spread these out. So if I select everything and I drag from the right, it will actually um, uh, move those out procedurally from each other, from from whatever this first point is. Let's see how that goes. All right. So the second thing I need to think about is the gun, uh, the prop in this point, uh, in this instance, because it, it's going to have a little bit of wiggle on it too. So I'm going to set a key here. I'm going to go find that other the other key. Where is it? right there and I'm going to set a key on the on the gun <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to add a little bit of wiggle to this gun too cuz it's going to it's going to it's going to shim me a little bit uh, as he let as he lets go so I'm just just doesn't need much, just a little bit. And it may look like you're like, yeah, it's moving his arms. Don't don't worry about it. It's gonna it'll look good when he's done. I think. Maybe.
All right, let's see how that looks. It's it's not bad. I think there could be more more wiggle in the gun. A little more of that tactile response to his uh, his primary hand letting go and attaching to it. Uh, maybe I'll bring it back down a little bit right here. There you go. So he's got a little bit of wiggle in the gun now that wasn't there before. So this is like, you know, things that we do when we're trying to to add a little bit more flair and onto an animation, make it fit a little more, you know, believable. I don't. Know, I still don't know if I'm like super happy with the timing of his hand, but I think we'll run with it for now. All right, I think uh, I think that's uh, it's getting there, right? It's getting there. All right, let's look at his hand wave now, which is this part right here. Hold on, I keep getting these texts. Let me check these texts. All right, cool. All righty then. All right, so I'm gonna do what I did before, which is I'm going to kind of like s squeeze my uh, frame range in so that I'm only looking at what I wanna look at, which is that, it's right there. So in your motion build, you have to be careful. Like what I'm doing right here is I'm just pinching time. I'm not actually cropping time. If I actually punched a number into these boxes like I did before with like 91 here and, and 222 two, two, uh, here, uh, and as soon as I bake everything down, it's literally going to delete the keys before frame 91 and after frame 222. Uh, but if I'm just pinching it in like I am now, it's okay. It's I'm, I'm not losing any of my animation. Shump. And there we go. So, wave and duh, wave and duh. All right, come on, guys, let's go. Let's see what his arm is doing. So he takes it off. I think I want to drop that hand down like it did before. So right here, as he kind of starts to pull it off. Set a key there. Uh, let's copy paste. Paste that offset a little bit to right about here. Now let's look at what his arm is doing. He's got a nice big arc. So it kind of comes up here. This is, uh, again, where you'd want to come in with those shoulders that we talked about earlier and kind of like lift it up. Now, he's got these big, thick uh, straps on, and he's not really weighted. That's that's another thing you have to look, look for with a character is how is the weighting and how is everything 
uh, working right here in this this whole shoulder area because I can I can lift this arm up and down all day long but if this if this doesn't move it's still gonna feel like it's flat so that's something to, to look out for so let's let's get a nice strong pose on him right right here I feel like this is a good frame for a good strong pose um, I'm probably going to do a full body pose in, a, in another pass, but I think this will get me part of the way there. So he kind of comes in, he goes, come on guys. And his arm probably comes forward a bit, shoulder. All right, I think I'm gonna work on his fingers as well. So let's go split screen so I can check out his fingers. Be his right hand. That comes over. I'm going to go ahead and zero out those keys, or uh, just zero, 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 and then local, yeah. All right, zero that out. Gives me a good starting point. Now I want his hand to be readable from a distance. So I'm going to try to, I'm, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to make his, his wave look readable if you're standing back and looking at him. his thumb not moving that's weird that moves that's not moving for some strange reason hmm I have no idea could be that it's just not weighted could be it's not weighted to that joint I should have a contest. Send me a cool character and that's well weighted and modeled. And if it doesn't have a skeleton, I'll put a skeleton in it and put motion capture on it and use it in a tutorial. That'd be cool. Your own character. Uh, by the way, if you want his hands to look like sticks, like the rest of his body, you can select all those joints. Come down into uh, the properties, select look, and select stick, and all of a sudden his hands look like the rest of his body. So, there we go. So what I'm, what's happening right now is I'm actually kind of starting to fight um, the motion capture for his hands, for that in particular hand. I think the, the motion on his hands is simple enough. I could probably just delete it and just hand key the fingers and get a better result. Uh, I do want this pose right here. So I'm going to create that pose under, in my pose control. I'm going to zoom in on the hand so that I, I know that's why I created this pose. So I, I clicked pose. Uh, down here. It's created that pose. I can call it hand. I, I can rename it. I'm going to go select all those fingers and I'm going to go to the base animation layer. Rotation and I'm just going to just going to go to frame 91 and I'm going to delete all those keys. Why do I go to frame 91? Uh, because whatever frame you're, you're, you've left off on or whatever frame you happen to be on when you delete all the keys, it will automatically shift all those joints to whatever that rotation and translation is. In this case, I want it uh, there. And you can see it's, his hands all messed up now. It's okay. 
because I paste, I copied the pose. And I'm going to paste the pose back on his hand just like that. Set a key. So there we go. No longer fighting the animation. I've got a good sense of what he's supposed to be doing. So his hand is right here. I'm going to have him let go right here. Oh, I selected his hand. Er, just, just the fingers. go. That'll work. If I need to readjust his hand later to make it fit better on the, the rifle, I can. Uh, open his hand up a little bit quicker. hands want to flip around for some reason. I have no idea why. Less. That's why. Delete that key. And, oh, got to delete on all the, the fingers. There we go. For some reason, the pose decided to post it uh, past 180. So it's like trying to flip that finger all the way around. That seems better. Yes, that is better. So I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to make the fingers uh, flare out a little bit. So they're going to curl in here, like they're dragging behind. So he comes in, he goes, curls the fingers in, flare, uh, flares them out, says, come on, holds the hand pose. To there, when he gets right here, his, his hands have kind of curled back in. And then he grabs a hold of the rifle right there. So let's figure out how he's holding on to that rifle. All right, so I'm going to bring that thumb over this way. Just like that. In case you're wondering if the weapon is massively different, then yes, you would have to do a second animation for whatever that other weapon is, uh, especially if that weapon is very different shaped than this weapon. Uh, but you could use this animation once it's all cleaned up and motion edit it to work with whatever the new weapon is. You could have like a rifle version and a, you know, a sniper rifle version and a rocket launcher version of the same motion. 
if the weapons, even though they look different, have the same metrics, in other words, everywhere he touches and grabs onto is exactly the same, then you can just reuse the animation over and over again. And he jumps over. Shroom. There you go. So he says, come on. He's got to open his hand back up. I think I like that big pose right there. I'm going to start with that as my base. Paste it right here. That'll work. Let's go to the very end where he adjusts his hand. Now I'm going to go tackle that. So let's, let's see how that works itself out. Start keying right there. I really wish I could like share two monitors <laughs> because I really wish I could put all my tools onto my second monitor and you still see what I'm doing. Uh, man, that'd be awesome. All right, so he's going to come down here and he's going to open up his fingers. I think I'm gonna paste that pose back on, but take that thumb, move it back over here. Yeah, bad, look at that waiting job. It's got a vertex that's misweighted. Send that back to the guy who weighted it, have him fix it. All right, so let's open up his fingers. And then I'm going to paste very first key keys back onto those fingers where he's actually gripping the gun. Since that is an established pose. So I'm, uh, because I just want the fingers to flare out and I don't want the thumb, the way that the, the body parts work when you're in body part mode in Motion Builder is the hand, arm, upper arm, clavicle, that is one unit. So if I key anything on here, it will key the whole arm. Same with the spine, every joint in the spine. Uh, if I key one joint, it keys them all. Same with the leg, yada, yada, yada. Same with the neck, the two neck joints in the head. Uh, that's how the fingers are. So if I set a key on the fingers, it's going to set a key on all the fingers. Uh, and what I want is I want these fingers to, to move a little bit independently from the, from the thumb. So I'm going to do that in the curve editor or the F curve editor. I'm just going to select these keys and I'm going to paste that on, paste that right there. So that those are still flared out, but the thumb's kind of starting to tuck in there. And then it, then it wraps around. You can also go one step further if you wanted to, and you can offset those fingers. Uh, this is what we were talking about earlier with slow, like something that's a slower motion versus a faster motion. Uh, in a high production environment, when you're doing a lot of these quick motions, you don't really need to put the fidelity in those fingers because you'll quite literally never see it. Uh, if you were doing something that was a little more deliberate and purposeful, like there was an intent to to the the character, like grabbing on. Again, if you're if you're just joining, this is a uh, airsoft rifle, not a real rifle. Uh, so if the intent is like I'm gonna get you, and I and I really want to like, you know. 
make it feel like each finger is kind of independently wrapping around whatever that is. Um, another good example is like a Bruce, like a Bruce Lee fist where he's kind of comes in, he kind of goes like this and it, he's like curling the individual fingers as he, as he comes in to make, make his fist. It's the same principle as, as, as the point that I, I talked about earlier is like, am I going there or I'm going there, you know, um, same, same concept and principle. Um, I'll show you here, even though probably I wouldn't really do it to an animation like this again, because of this whole speed thing, right? So he's going to, he's going to flare up or flare out his fingers. So if I like it would be like, hmm. I think I go pinky out first as I as I slowly re release this grip. So I gotta think about this timing wise. That means his pinky would move first uh, and then followed by the rest of his digits. So under rotation, I select all of his fingers. I'm gonna have to think this through my head. I want the pinky to move first, so I'm gonna deselect the pinky. I'm gonna select all the other finger joints, and I'm gonna move it forward one frame. I'm gonna deselect the next finger, which is the ring, and move everything forward one frame. And then same for the index, one frame. I'm only doing one frame because it's such a quick animation, right? So let's see what let's see how this looks. So he's gonna come up. I don't know if you even see it. I don't even know if you can tell the difference. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see. It. You can kind of see how how uh, how the pinky's starting to come up first. Uh, in fact, I think what I might do is I might grab this because I, I kind of like that kind of fidelity. I think I'll grab these fingers, which you can see all the keys here. I think I'm going to start it sooner in the animation. Um, I'm just going to scale them out like that. Yeah, there we go. So, so now we're getting a, a little bit more of that offset I mean yeah it's clipping through the gun but I think that's fine and I think I want it to go in reverse right when he when he comes and grabs onto the grip I think I want it to to go the other way like pinky comes in first and then like that So if I think about this, that means the pinky's got to come in first again. So I'm going to delay these fingers. So I'm going to go grab those fingers, but not the pinky. And I'm going to go forward a frame. Maybe select that. Go forward a frame. Select, select that. Go forward one frame. You can see how those fingers are now uh, curling in, slightly offset. Still a little quick for me. I think I'm going to grab all these and I'm going to scale them a little. Ah. What did I do? Did I screw something up? Z, Z, undo, undo. There we go few undos and we're good. One, two, move this out one. There we go. I don't know if I'm super happy with that wrist, but uh, 
don't know, it's starting to bug me <laughs> the more I look at it. Let's see here. Kind of comes up. I think I need this a little more even. That's eh, a little bit better. It's amazing that sometimes uh, just one frame makes all the difference. Just taking taking your key when something doesn't feel right, you go, ah, something doesn't feel right with the timing, and just taking that, that key and just going, ink, one way or the other, backwards or forwards, and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what happened? All now my timing is really good. All right. It's eleven o'clock. A little bit more time before uh, before I have to wrap it, because I got to get up in the morning and go make a video game. Thumb's not quite clearing that, is it? Let me see that node. I think I'll have it come back and over. There. Look at that thumb real fast, because that's kind of bugging me. It's going to curl that thumb in to clear clear that obstacle. There we go. Now let's look at his other hand because man is it starting to look really bad. <laughs> now that everything else is starting to look good, that other hand is starting to look really, really bad. All right, so um, hands don't lock down to things that you grab use my uh airsoft rifle for for an example so you know sometimes your hand is like this sometimes your hand is like this you know it really it really varies uh the this part of the the rifle this airsoft rifle is the same way it's like is my hand here is my hand here I kind of depending on how you're 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 handling the object could determine how your your hand glides around it, and you know so when you go at ease, this left hand this right hand may stay locked, but this left hand will like slide around, maybe even like put it on top. But 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 you're not going to break your wrist, you know by so I can't, I can't drop. If my left hand is locked, left hand is locked, and I try to drop it, I can't drop past here because my wrist is just not letting me. I have to actually loosen my grip with my left hand and let it, let the object glide in the hand a little bit. So that's what's going to happen here. His hand's going to be gliding around a little bit. And I have to go through the animation the whole animation to figure out figure out how to make this work and look good. So it starts off here, which is an okay pose. And then he goes, come on. And I think there it needs to be shifted a little bit more like so.
So what I'm trying to do is uh, again posing, strong posing. I'm trying to I'm trying to make this this arm feel strong and not weak. And a lot of times in games, because of IK and all sorts of other stuff, a lot of times you'll get that <laughs> or uh, that. <laughs> so uh, if you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. You want to uh, have that hand be able to glide around on that object a little bit. So I'll put it right there. Come to the next key. Are there keys on here? Yes, there are keys on here. I'm going to copy that last key and paste it right there, which I think is a good, good spot for it. And paste it right there. Sometimes you get lucky and you'd be like, oh, I found like the perfect spot to put this hand. Out, over, oh yeah, look at that, Erk. <laughs> there's a couple ways we can handle this. I can do it by fixing the gun, which I might do. I can fix it by fixing the arm. I think I'm going to do it by fixing the gun. I'm just going to pull this key in, see how it feels. This is a zero key? Yeah, it's a zero key. So it's getting it back to close to where the motion capture originally was. I think I will add a little bit of an extra key right here, like that. Then I'll glide his hand around. This is another good moment for a strong pose. Uh, I'm gonna, I think I need to adjust this rifle a little bit. Have I ever got so tired of a character so much that after a, the project was done, the game was released, you just made him do something insane, things like arms and legs, flailing or whatever. I I I don't I wouldn't say I got so tired that I made him do something crazy, but I, I, I have had fun with characters outside of of uh the normal development cycle. Um I wonder if I have that video laying around somewhere. I don't know if I can play. I, I used a Black Eyed Peas song, and I had a the main character of Starhawk dance to it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So we're at the end of development, and uh, it, we're. It, I'm not crunching because I was the only animator on the project, and I was allowed to manage myself. And I I, I finished all my my work on time, and I almost never had a crunch. That's partly good management, uh, good producers uh, signing work the right way and uh, not going over scope by the uh, company. But I was also able to manage my, my time wisely and never had to, to, to crunch. So at the very end of the project, everybody else was crunching. Everybody was like head down, just like trying to get the game shipped. And I'm just like, hmm, what am I going to do while I'm, I'm waiting for a bug to come to me? So we, our actor on stage, uh, when we shut the motion capture, decided to do a dance. So I, I grabbed that, that mocap and I edited it, you know, so it's nice and clean on the main character, put it into our title screen of the game because um, I just loaded the level and, and replaced the current idol, which is just a very, you know, typical idol with the dance. So now, now the character's like dancing on the screen. And I then later edited uh, music to it, which is a, a Black Eyes P song. And um, because we were developing on a, 
uh, PlayStation 3 and I didn't have a way of actually recording the video because I, I couldn't play it. We didn't have a way of playing the game in on our on our computers. We had to actually push it to a dev kit and play it on the dev kit. I had to actually get my phone out and actually had to record <laughs> my my little TV next to my, my computer, the, the, the dance, and then I added music to it. And I, I shotgunned it out to the, the whole studio and said, hey, since you guys are working so hard, or whatever I said, and, and uh, played played it. And I and I just kind of sat back and I just kind of waited for a response. And okay, it, it was, as, at some point, somebody goes, blah, ha, 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 over here. Then, blah, ha, ha, ha. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, this is good. You just hear, hear people like, seeing you know pulling their heads out of like whatever task it is and just taking that that little tiny little break and be like uh that was that was that was satisfying <laughs> i'll have to i'll have to find it i wouldn't be surprised if i i bet it's on my demo reel on the youtube channel <laughs> oh i'll have to find it uh, Twitch and licensed music. I wish I, I wish I had music playing right now. That, <laughs> that, that wasn't lame. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, and he jumps down. What was I working on? I was working on his left arm, wasn't I? So working on his left arm and the gun. That's what I was working on. Jumps. Yeah, that, that looks yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, that work. Good enough. Good, good, good. Once I'm happy with the hand and the gun and the everything, I'd go back and I'd animate the fingers on that left hand. I think I want to hold that a little bit longer. Yeah, see how it slides into place there. I think I'm not going to do that till closer to the end. Delete some of those keys. Why am I? Oh, psh. I forgot to grab the other keys. There we go. And this is just going to be pushing keys around to kind of get the timing correct. So there we go. We got Gad jumping over something invisible. Let's see if I can rotate that light around so we can get a different view. So I'm going to go ahead. So normally you work in, in passes. Normally I probably would have spent a, a, long, a, a decent amount of time on this pass, just kind of getting all the, the bits and bobs and the odds and ends worked out. Uh, so when I'm when I feel like I'm done, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll plot everything down, plot to skeleton, plot to control rig, and I, I've baked down all the adjustments that I did. Now let's 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 talk a little bit more about that posing. Now is a good time to come in and start finding those key poses that you want to make really strong, and you want to do it in like a full body way. So I'm just gonna set a full body key. We 
me you could, I could come back here and I can like really make it like dramatic. Let's turn that down. Let's turn that on. Let's pin rotation. So when I rotate his chest, his head stays. Zero that out. So that kind of gives him a, a slightly bigger come come on. Uh, chances are these guys are gonna be like this big on screen. <laughs> so it's got to read from a distance. And we'll we'll turn on and off the uh, animation layer and have an idea of what it looks like before and after. We'll pinch this in here so we're just looking at that edit motion. See, there's after, there's before. It's good, not bad. Adding a little bit more kind of gives them a little bit more of a reach. And then you kind of have to balance things out. Does it look good? Does it really add to uh, the overall performance? Sometimes it doesn't. You just say, no, nope, that's not good. Let's let's try something different. Let's put in a box for him to jump over. So asset browser, uh, elements, cube, drag that there. Scale this up. Whoa. Oh, oh no, I grabbed something. Undo, undo. Undo, 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 undo. What happened? There it goes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. This is why you have 50, le 50 levels of undo. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, no. I must have had something selected and not realized it. All right. So, cube. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> And I turn that cube into a small point, but there we go. There we go. Scale that. Try not to make that mis whatever that mistake was again. <laughs> Just gonna jump over the thing right there. Man, that kid could jump high. The actor we had on stage was like 17, 18 years old, something like that. He had a really good physicality to him, so. <laughs> yeah, I made my heart sink too. I was like, oh crap, when was the last time I saved? <laughs> when did I save my file? You know what? I'm going to hit save right now. Save. Right. Oh Lord. And he lands. Come on, guys, jump, land. Let's. Man, look how good his right foot is clearing this obstacle. Let's let's make it a little bit taller. Like he's really got to jump to get over this thing. Let's make him. Let's make him clear this. All right, so that's going to mean dealing with his uh, foot. 
I'm going to go ahead and replot to skeleton and back to controller control rig just to be on the safe side. Make sure everything's baked down. So I'm going to run and jump, and that's the foot that has to clear, but it's also the one that's kicking up off the ground. So, yeah, I'll do full body key. Full body key, eh, and then he's got to land like, like so. He's got to clear the box right here. So I got to figure out what works best. What pose works best for that? Well, I'm going to bring that foot up and clear the obstacle. Maybe uh, angle his foot up a little bit so it just maybe scuffs the top. Uh, maybe a little bit more. I'm trying to figure out what works best for this. So there he goes. Yeah, it doesn't look too awkward. I think we worked with the mocap. Chomp. <laughs> it's got a weird little pel pelvis thing at the end. Do you, you see that? Right there. I'd have to take if if I was doing this for a game, I'd have to take that out so it doesn't look so silly. That little hip thing at the end. So there we go. We have an animation. I wouldn't call this like final final but I'd say this is uh, it's not too bad <laughs> that was like a victory twerk yeah let's let's go back and look at those cheering which obviously nothing's happening because you remember why do you remember why you remember what happened it's because he is not playing the character there we go air guitar and you remember why the rifle's not working do you remember do you remember it's because I turned off the mocap so I'm just gonna turn it back on so now it's being driven by the mocap so victory victory I got you guys I got you We win! <laughs> Woohoo! Kicked your butts. You're mine. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. Victory at last. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna have to do that one where he's like doing the air guitar and like turn that into like when somebody follows. Just with a little guitar riff. <laughs> That'd be cool. My, I might have to do that. <laughs> All right, well, it's 11.32, guys and gals. I think that's about it for me for today. Um, but I really appreciated getting the opportunity to, uh, you know, show you guys a little bit about a little more motion capture. Uh, I did props. I'm constantly trying to think of, um, what kind of things are interesting to show and to learn. If anybody has any ideas on stuff that you want to see, uh, unfortunately I can't show star citizen stuff, NDAs, that sort of thing. But if there's anything you guys are wanting to see um, or learn or know more about, go more in depth into, 
let me know. I'm thinking maybe next time I will do an animation of some more interaction, maybe between two characters, maybe uh, getting into a vehicle. How do you handle multiple characters on a set? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I took away my feedback box at the bottom of uh, my channel, but maybe I'll, I'll put it back or maybe I'll create an email uh, that you guys can, can click on. Um, I'm thinking, um, I'm tossing around the idea of um, a contest, uh, alien with multiple limbs. Oh, that's possible. Yeah, totally do that. That'd be cool. Give me an alien with multiple limbs and we will we'll work on it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, it's, it's, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to think of some more stuff. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe how do you handle multiple characters in a scene? Eh, it'd be a short tutorial, but you know, could be a good one. I have a few scenes that are like that. Or how do you stitch two completely different animations or two animations that were shot to work together? How do you, how do you shoot them and make, and, and, and figure out how to make those things work together and how do you edit them together? So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, come back next Wednesday. I'll, I'll have more mocap stuff. Come, come join me on Sundays for sculpting because I do sculpting, uh, as well, just like traditional type sculpting. And um, and I will see you all next time. You all have a great night.